We're now looking at number 14 in the circulation problem set. So in this problem, we have a patient who had an initial arterial blood pressure of 120 over 80. So before, his blood pressure was 120 over 80. We then made one manipulation, and his blood pressure changed to 123 over 91. So if we look at our changes in the blood pressures, by changing one manipulation, we've increased his systolic blood pressure by three millimeters of mercury, and we've increased his diastolic blood pressure by 11 millimeters of mercury. Now in class, we went through some of the main factors that would affect either the systolic or the diastolic blood pressure. So when we were discussing the systolic blood pressure, we saw that the two main factors that would primarily affect the systolic pressure were stroke volume and the aortic compliance. Whereas the two main factors that would affect the diastolic blood pressure would be the heart rate and the total peripheral resistance, which is also analogous to the systemic vascular resistance. So in this situation, after changing one manipulation, we saw that our largest change was in the diastolic blood pressure. So automatically, we know that it's unlikely that our one manipulation was on stroke volume or on aortic compliance because they would tend to cause a larger change in the systolic blood pressure. So just from that initial prompt, we can go ahead and eliminate responses B and C. So then we have to determine what was it most likely an increased heart rate that led to these effects or a decrease in the systemic vascular resistance or the TPR. So first, let's look at the heart rate. In order to do that, let's look at our diagram that we used in class, looking at our profile of the arterial blood pressure. And we have to think about what effect an increase in heart rate would have on this picture. Well, when you increase the heart rate, the heart always spends about the same amount of time in systole, but you spend less time in a relaxation period after each beat. That would actually decrease our diastolic period, or the amount of time that the heart spends relaxing in between each contraction of the heart. So if we go to our diagram, you can really think of that as being like we're cutting off the cardiac cycle and eliminating that tail. So we still contract, we still have systole, but because we've decreased the heart rate, the heart will spend less time relaxing in between each heartbeat. So what you would see is a profile that looks something like that. So the diastolic blood pressure would be elevated. So what we can see here is if we increase the heart rate, as indicated in the prompt, we should see an increase in the diastolic blood pressure. And that does fit with what was described in this particular situation where we did see a large increase in the diastolic blood pressure. So it appears that A is a correct answer, but let's go ahead and look at D so we know why it might be an incorrect response. So in this case, what we've done is we've decreased the systemic vascular resistance, or the TPR. So if we look at our big picture of the heart, you'll recall that the systemic vascular resistance depends on the constriction primarily of arterioles. So that if we decrease, erase that, if we decrease the SVR, 
what we would see is less constriction of our arterioles. And you'll recall that that is one of the main factors that's in going to influence the run through from the arterial to the venous side. It's the constriction of the arterioles. So if we have less constriction that's happening, we should see an increase in the run through from the arteries into the veins. So the overall result of this on our figure is we would certainly see a significant decrease in the diastolic blood pressure because, remember diastolic blood pressure is measured in the arteries, we're going to have more blood that's leaving the arteries running through over to the venous side of our circulation. So if we go back to our diagram, we would see something like this if we did decrease the systemic vascular resistance, that would produce a drop in the diastolic blood pressure because we've increased our run through of the circulatory system. So that would not give us the effects that we've seen above with this patient, and so we can eliminate D as a correct response. So hopefully this helped to clarify this question for you. As always, please let me know if you have any further questions about the material.